Do you have a motorcycle crankcase that's got some broken threads? Find out how to fix that. This was one of the toughest videos to title. Um, this isn't about putting a, a thread repair kit in a hole or anything like that. This is actually when you have a, your motorcycle crankcase actually has a section broke where the threads go. The sometimes it may be completely broke off and that would be really hard to fix, but if you've got a partial hole lift or you have a cover that you can bolt up there and figure out where to, to put the threads are, this video might help you. In this case, I actually used um, there's these rivets um, that are actually threaded. It takes a special rivet gun. You've probably seen them as seen on TV type thing, but they um, they're threaded, and then the rivet gun kind of goes and pulls the thread part it up and collapses some of it into a hole. That way, you can actually put threads in, in holes that they would normally be too thin to thread. Like if you have a piece of aluminum or a piece of metal that's really thin, threading the hole that you drill may not be enough threads. This roof is designed to actually add a thick enough amount of threads. But there's many ways you can do this. Uh, you can add, if you want to melt in aluminum, uh, or uh, if you can find aluminum nuts, because I actually that's how I found the rivets, is I was looking for aluminum nuts to put in here. In this video, you're going to see where I have taken a aluminum rivet and I burrowed out the, what was the remaining part of the hole I just kind of kept rasping it out with a, an air die grinder and made it big enough to push the threads I needed into it and then I, in this case I MIG welded it and there's these aluminum rods that you can use for brazing um, I tried to use it it didn't really work I mean I did get some of it to kind of uh, braze in but they, they really require like 750 degrees to actually melt like butter and it actually kind of flows and looks real nice but when the crankcase is all together when your, your whole motorcycle engine is all together you're trying to heat up not only just the outside of aluminum but you're trying to heat up the metal in behind it which would be the transmission you can start melting seals I used an oxygen acetylene torch because it the flames a little bit hotter on it of course I didn't you know melt the crankcase or anything but I did get some of it to braise. I would highly recommend in this fix here if you have something similar the biggest fix would be if you can get that uh, thread like what you're going to watch in this video put down well enough to actually use a, a, an epoxy like JB Weld some type of metal made type epoxy for that. I'll put in what uh, I actually use a little bit of a JB Weld on another crankcase I fixed and I'll put that uh, model number or the model of the uh, JB Weld because they have different part numbers for JB Wells for doing different things. I'll put that down in the description. So let's get into the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Today we're going to try to fix a broken ear on a crankcase. Now this is a Honda CT70, so it doesn't really matter. If you ever have any ears, when I say ear, it's basically like where the casting comes out on an edge and has threads and is broke. Uh, Whenever you have threads like these strip out, you can use helicoils, but when it busts like this, then you've got nothing to thread to. So we're going to try to fix it by using an aluminum rivet. These are threaded rivets. It's for a particular type of uh, rivet gun where you um, stick this through and then it pulls it up through and gives you threads in a hole. But because it's aluminum, same as that case, I'm going to uh, cut this where it's going to fit into this hole and, and, and drill this hole out big enough to, for, to slide this down in the hole and keep it lined up. What that hole catches is it catches the bottom and the side cover here. It catches this bottom hole here which on a CT70 model also is the uh, part of holding the uh, chain guard on so it's kind of crucial that it has that bolt. So we're going to attempt to do some uh, altering the metal around, drill it out a little bit, insert that rivet to where it needs to be, where the threads all line up. Luckily in this case, there's still some threads, just I think they're at the very bottom. So I might be able to use a bolt to kind of help guide this uh, thing in and keep it straight and lined up. If not, if you don't have that luxury, 
you can just put your cover up there and bolt it with the other two bolts and get uh, things lined up so that it, you don't have to do any filing of holes. Of course, obviously, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to degrease all this and clean it. You can, you're not going to, aluminum is kind of hard to weld anyways, and I'm going to be using a MIG with a uh, gas shielding. You can use a TIG, and there's some new rods out, and if I can get the part numbers for that, I'll put them in the, in, in the uh, description that kind of uh, are great for repairing heads or aluminum stuff. So what we're going to do is we got to clean all this up first, get all this degreased, clean and stuff, and then um, and see where we go from there. Now all I did is I just cleaned it. I got a little, uh, little wire brush and some carburetor cleaner, or a brake parts cleaner, any type of cleaner like that. And just uh, cleaned off the area. Then I took, I just got a, a bolt that has the correct threads and thread it into what was left. Although it's hard to grab and keep straight. Like I said, you may not be that lucky. In this case here, I just put it there so that I can look at uh, how much the rivet's going to, what I got to drill out. And it's not very much because the rivet's kind of thin anyway. So it's basically going to just be taking up the part that's missing some stuff. So. I'm not going to draw all the threads out because I want to use part of that to help line up the uh, the bolts so that way the threads. So once once you put the side cover back on, uh, there's no meandering around with the bolts. It'll just go right in the hole. So, but this rivet's obviously going to be too tall. I'm going to have to cut some of it off, and um, I'll probably leave some sticking up until I get uh, what I need done, and uh, I'm going to spot it in. Okay, I've been rasping out the hole with a rasp. Um, you can get them at parts stores. I'll try to find a good uh, supplier and put it down in the description. And when you rasp this out, I mean, I've got it close to putting this in there. I cut it to the little flange off. Just made it, cut the flange off, just made some threads. And it's just starting to go, but you got to be careful. One, you can't uh, just go carving this metal out because you want to carve into the case where it uh, actually can go into the where oil will come out of it and stuff. You don't do that. So <clears throat> what I've been doing, I couldn't find. If you could find um, a rasp that's the same size diameter as your um, piece of aluminum you're going to stick in there, would be great. But what I'm going to do, since I've got this taper, when I'm just going about it real slow. And angling it. I'm not going all the way to the bottom of it. I could have used a drill bit, but I, I didn't want the drill to start trying to drill into the case and go all the way through. Plus, I wanted to leave a little bit of what where the threads were before so that I can get this lined up straight. We're just going at a little bit of time. And that's starting to fit. It needs to go down a little bit more though. So it's just something we work at just slowly and surely. So I kept filing or rasping out with a rasp. And then I just set this up here and it kind of fell in there and it's kind of, I mean, I just pushed on it and it's kind of locked in place. I don't want to take it back out. Um, the trick is, is just file a little bit, put your insert in there and just keep doing a little at a time because like I said, you don't want to eat up in the case. And then just, uh, you don't want to, it doesn't have to be driven in with a hammer or anything like that. You just, as a matter of fact, if I keep messing with it, it may fall back out. But I just kept making it opening up the hole until it has kept going further down and I kind of just pushed on my thumb and it's it's in there. So to test it to see make sure it's all lined up before I go and actually spot it in. And also you don't have to use a welder if you don't have a welder. Uh, there are plenty of epoxies, JB welds. Uh, there's all sorts of epoxies out there that uh, will work great on this. 
a matter of fact, I might even consider it myself. So I pushed in with my thumb, so hopefully it won't pop out. Let's just see. Pretty close. What I may do is I'm going to go ahead and screw it down with a screwdriver and then uh, put it in place just to make sure and then I want to lift the bike up and just use the uh, Kickstarter and turn the motor and make sure it's not rubbing the flywheel or anything. I mean, it's just something you want to go over each step, each move, and make sure that everything's right. I mean, I'm looking at it and it's just a, it's just a smidge up higher than what I. And then again, I can't tell if that's exactly right or not or where the other one set. The other side cover was uh, bashed, smashed, and what usually breaks the ears off right here is when the chain is running up through here. If the chain breaks or comes off, it usually breaks the side to the, the cover inside and usually areas around the crankcase and it always ends up always grabbing this ear and busting it. What I've done is I went ahead and put time the side cover on. I've tightened these screws down. And then I wanted to make sure that this still lines up and threads, and it does. So that's a good thing. And like I said, I'm being careful because all I've done is push that thing in the rasp out hole with my thumb. No tapping with hammer. You can, but if you do, you remember you're going to out around something, or you, it, it, you don't really have to force it. Just uh, rasp out your hole a, little, a very little bit at a time until you get the uh, insert to fit. Now what I'm going to do as I'm going to set the bike up and crank it with a kickstarter just to make sure that the magneto is not dragging on the timing cover or on the side cover. Probably not because for a long time it's only had two screws in here anyways. This has been broke for some time. But like I said, the uh, um, chain guard, those are the two bolts for the chain guard and then this is the other one. So the chain guard's always flopping around out here. So, and it's gotten caught before and things. So. This will be a fix. So let's uh, check this out. I'm going to turn it over with, my, with the Kickstarter. No dragging. So we are good and lined up. The next thing is, well, on my part, I'm going to weld. Uh, on your part, you could be JB welding or, like I said, I'm going to put those rods down in the description. But uh, whatever means you're going to use to bond this thread to the can crankcase, you're ready. Okay, I MIG'd it in, and that's more like spot welding. I mean, even though I made those big balls, I'd have to play with the welder to get it to probably weld a little bit better than, than that. Looks like Dirt Dauber's Nest, but... Um, if those rods will come in before I have to take this bike back, I'll show you how you can flow that in but that that's actually got it held in there I've actually put a bolt in it pulled on it nothing it wouldn't come out it, it's in there so once you get those rods and it just kind of flow aluminum all into those cracks and stuff and make it look like a factory case okay I just took a little hand wire brush and just kind of rubbed it around there a little bit just to clean up where I had uh, put those dirt dauber spot welds on uh, some MIGs, and it, TIGging, if you have a TIG welder, would do a lot better on that. Um, one reason why aluminum would ball up like that is if I had heated the metal with a torch, it would have done better on the spot. Because all I really want to do is just spot it in, but it just balled up. And, but I wanted to make sure it penetrated. But, so I mean, it could be done much better. And like I said, you can, you, I'll, I'll put a list in the description. There's, there's plenty of epoxies out there that you could have just put this in with. JB Weld makes them. I'll find the best one and put down in the description. But you can use epoxies to put this in with as well. Now if you're going to plan on doing some high torque or uh, something that's going to really require, um, like if it was an engine mount, I wouldn't recommend epoxies. But for a side cover, for what this is, uh, an epoxy will work just as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use some aluminum brazing rods. or hopefully one one rod and then that'll help uh, adhere this in better and then make it flow and look really nice 
Now I'm using propane. Map gas would probably be a little, will burn a little bit hotter. But these rods melt around 720 to 750 degrees. Of course, the thing is, we got a lot of um, uh, metal to heat up here. Okay, so I raised it and then I kind of just wire brushed it off right here. And it could be dressed up with some grinding wheels and stuff better. And I'd like to get it to flow in bottom and the bottom right here a little bit better just to make it swoop out some. But uh, the whole goal was just to get this uh, bike back on the road or, do, or actually just get it running again. Uh, we're actually planning on rebuilding the engine. Uh, and I'm going to do a video on that and when I've got the crankcase apart and less aluminum to heat up because aluminum dissipates heat so fast it's hard to get it I didn't want to take a chance of melting the aluminum that's already here so when I have the crankcase off I'll be able to rotate it around and get my brazing rod in there better to fill that in with but like I said you can use epoxy this is just one method but uh, the biggest thing was to show you how to rasp out the, the hole and being careful doing that, just taking a little bit of steps at a time until you get your little rivet insert with the threads put in there. And um, like I said, just epoxy it. Or if you have a MIG or a TIG, just spot it in. And that's how you fix a broken ear on a, a broken threaded ear on a, a small motorcycle engine. So if you have any questions about what I've done in this video and how to fix the crankcase, uh, Please leave a comment or contact me through my website, which is also down in the description. And I'll answer any questions you have, or, or you can send me some pictures of what you've got going on, and maybe I can come up with a, um, a way to help you. But if uh, this video did help you, be sure to like and subscribe, and always check back because I'm always working on just different things. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.